Hello, Macy here. Furthering my experiments with ion drives, this is Vega. Now, I have an obsession with single stage ships. I was brought up on lots of sci fi, and I like spaceships. I like things that take off and get into orbit as single stages. I've mentioned this before. So, I'm very stubborn, and I refuse to give up. And I've tried to implement the ion drive on these sort of heavy fighter classes that I'm making. Um, they're minuscule for us, as we've said before, and this is clearly a much heavier craft than, say, my solar-powered ship. But, I mean, I'm a patient man. If I can get to another planet in a single stage, I'm willing to give it a go. So, this has two ion drives installed on the back, as you can see. So, they are quite heavy, considering that it's a very fine line getting something like this into orbit in the first place. Um, and I originally wanted to take four ion drives across the, the back there, but I've only got two, and there's no way I've tried everything of getting four, which is actually the um, Mark V class. This is the Mark VII, as you can see I've been playing around a bit. This is the most I can get up, so two ion drives. Um, I play this game largely for the aesthetic value when it comes to things. I mean, I often build things that aren't necessarily practical, but are fun to play, and that's the idea of it for me. So, um, back to the situation at hand. This is the final liquid fuel burn. Um, just going to drift up to the zenith and empty my tanks and make orbit. So once it's circular, I'm just going to try and leave the system in retrograde. So I'm just going to burn the tiny bit that's left in my tank to give me a head start. And then switch to sail mode. So here she is. The bird takes flight. Beautiful. Yet impractical. Because it took me so long to get anywhere, the thrust is so small that the power to weight ratio is is almost non-existent um, but it did go somewhere if I had more patience than I did I could have got somewhere maybe possibly to the moon and back or a station orbiting the moon and back given a very long time because it took me over an hour to open my orbit up this far or close to an hour anyway um, time accelerating around the orbit and only burning at periapse or very near periapse. So in the context of what I set out to do, this is a failure. Um, I wanted to at least leave the system, maybe even get to EVE or something like that, but it's not going to work. Not without a ship that's considerably lighter or has many more ion drives. So in true Macy style, I'm not ready to give up yet. This is Sail Barge Eskit, um, which I've needed to lift off through rockets and conventional means. Um, but with the view of taking this somewhere else to orbit around another um, planet, possibly Eve to start with, to use as a refueling station specifically for ion drive ships. Even if a ship like Vega could get to another planet, it certainly couldn't get back with the sort of reserves that it had. So Eskit is laden with um, xenon gas and propellant, which is relatively light. Um, it's also got plenty of reserves to get itself there. Um, and this amount of ion drives will actually give it some thrust, despite its much larger bulk, and much more thrust than my last um, attempt mainly because although big it's um, relatively light these sails don't weigh much considering and the actual hull of the ship is built from very light framework but it still took me a very long time to sail up to this 400 meter orbit so I'm just going to leave it here for now and design a much lighter ship that I can dock with this an interplanetary ship I just want to get it as light as I possibly can with ion drives so this is sailing skiff rear um, this is just the launch staging um, the actual sailing ship is just the very top so I've abandoned my quest to find an interplanetary single stage 
ship for now. Um, believe me, I'm stubborn enough to keep trying. Um, but it would be nice to have a interplanetary space-borne ship that could get essentially all over the system. All it needs is the occasional refuel of, of xenon gas, which lasts an incredibly long time. So you don't need much gas to go a very long way if you can get the power to weight ratio down. I mean, I've mentioned before that probes are the best application for these ion drives, but I want to make a manned ship. Like I've said before, I'm, I'm so stubborn. So if any of you have any ideas, if any of you can crack this, please um, tell me how to do it because I would really like to succeed in this, however pointless it is. So now I've deployed the sails. I've worked out for experimentation that one huge array is just not enough to power one engine. So one huge array and one um, more modest panel should be enough to power one ion drive at full power. So I messed up my takeoff a bit and I ended up ahead of the station in my orbit so I'm just time accelerating to catch it up. So I've reached a point in this orbit where I believe the following time around I am likely to get a close encounter at the far side of my orbit here. Um, I've done a this sort of thing on videos before so I'm not going to go into it um, too deeply for risk of repeating myself but you can just see me moving the maneuver node there to just fine tune where this encounter is going to happen. Again I'm bringing those two markers, the two purple markers as close as I can which is where I will be and where the target will be um, closest to me in this orbit. Although the manoeuvre node is an incredibly powerful tool, I still say that you shouldn't use it overly. You should always try and get your orbit as close as you can by eye and feel first because otherwise you'll end up spending huge amounts of fuel trying to achieve the sort of massive delta V maneuvers that you're going to need to do to change plane shifts and all of these things. This won't tell you what's most efficient, it will just give you a prediction of what you're doing. So if you don't really know how to make orbits and where to be in the first place, you're going to end up using far too much fuel. So I've come round to my target where I need to burn here, the place at which I need to burn, but you can see that my thrust is so small that um, it's taken some time to exhaust that bar. So the maneuver node prediction has failed me somewhat here because I'm having to chase this marker around the orbit for slightly longer than I think it intended, trying to um, achieve the speeds I need to do. So very importantly, once you come around to this point again, you need to lay another maneuver node and just correct your orbit so the following time you come around you're still going to be next to this target and your orbit must be a similar shape otherwise even though you make the encounter you're going to be drifting away from it. So here we are on the final approach to, to the station. Um, I always like to be within a few kilometers. It will just make it far easier in the long run and now I can just linearly boost towards it. I'm losing power here so I just need to turn my sails towards the sun. You have to constantly adjust with these sail ships and make sure you've got the best wind as it were, the trade winds. As you approach the target you need to keep making these course corrections and again if you can see on my nav ball you can see my direction of travel indicated by the prograde symbol, the yellow symbol and the target is the pink symbol. So I need to keep pushing my direction over the target so I'm pushing one marker over the other and so I'm getting close now so I need to turn around and um, just slow myself down I'm using RCS thrusters only here so you always have to bring RCS thrusters when you intend to dock with anything because otherwise you're going to make it incredibly difficult for yourself and it's incredibly difficult as it is at this point you could consider switching to your docking mode now I don't use it because I got so used to doing these orbital rendezvous and so on in previous versions of the game that I'm just used to it and I don't really know how to use that docking mode yet so um, like, as you can see I've just killed my the last of my angular momentum by putting the marker directly over so I'm heading ever so slowly directly towards it now so I have to be patient 
I heavily edit my videos to avoid the mind-numbing boredom of situations like this, so I've just skipped to the final approach. I've never used these inline docking ports before, and this is an inline to an inline, so it looks a little bit more more tricky. So I'm going to just take it slow, and try and line it up. So this is the final mating. A few minutes later, and there you go. Now I had a bit of a problem here because it does wiggle somewhat as it tries to get itself aligned and usually you can just turn off your SAS if you had it on and it will just snap shut but it really does take some time and I think this is a bug they did say they'd fix this so if this happens to you don't panic just wait <laughs> and wait and wait and it will eventually wiggle itself together I'm just making very slight adjustments to try and help it align so there you go sailing skiff rear docked with sail barge Eskit where the crew can do their usual ex exchange of stories out here in the lonely black glass of whiskey or two maybe now if you see all those pods down the spine that's all um, xenon gas and propellant which is um, quite light considering so this ship hasn't got any liquid fuel it doesn't need it it's just for ion drive engine so I'm just going to refuel my little ship here this is done in the exact same way as exchanging normal fuel in fact I believe you can exchange all resources from one ship to another so if you can imagine this ship in orbit round Eve or somewhere um, then this is going to give it more than enough to get back to get anywhere but it's going to take me a very long time to get it there and one day I'm going to have to find the patience and believe me it will take a lot of patience so now it's time to leave the station and be on our way I do love these um, inside cockpit views I hope they finish the other cockpit views because it's only this one that's really worth mentioning the others are a bit um, lacking so closing my hatch, opening my sails, just watch the station drift past. I haven't actually achieved any of my major objectives in this video, but um, I hope you can see it's just like a showcase of some of the things you can do with ion drives, some of the fun you can have with them. Maybe if you could take this further and um, see what you can do with it and get back to me about um, what success you've had with it. Building from what I've learnt from these experiments with ion drives, I've actually managed to design my probe which I'm going to be using for my um, Wonders of the Kerbal System series. Um, so look out for that. Probes are indeed a far more practical application for these ion drives as you'll see. So just drifting past the station here it's good to use that as a frame of reference to see that there is some thrust <laughs> with these ion drives it's hard to see sometimes when you're in the, the depths of space and they make no sound but you can see I am receding from that at quite some considerable rate rather than leave the system now I want to save that for another mission when I've got the infrastructure in place and the refueling station out wherever I'm going but I'm just going to take it out onto an escape trajectory to see how much fuel that would actually take and how long that would actually take me and indeed this is this is far better than any of the other ships I've designed and it does get somewhere and you can always hit the moon and use that for a gravity assist to fling you out somewhere but yeah a success really